I'm here with Stefan Matthews. Hi, nice to have you back at Coin Geek. Hi, Claire. How are you? Good. And we are at the Digital Filipinas Festival 2023 at the Blockchain Social. So you did mention some announcements and updates of what Enchain has been up to, actually the amazing work that the team has been up to. Can we just reiterate that for the, our backstage audience? I'd like to update our teams around the world on what's relevant and new. And of course, we've been talking about Terranode for quite a long time now and the Terranode project. And I've noticed on social media in recent times, there's been a few questions about, you know, what is happening with Terranode? Uh, where is Terranode? Well, the good news is, and you know, we haven't put out public announcements yet, so I'm talking about things here that haven't been formally released, but has taken quantum steps in the last six months, particularly the last four months. And we went through uh, a serious uh, relook at the design and architecture. Uh, we spent a lot of time with Craig reviewing the design and architecture because no one knows more about processing transactions on that network than Craig because he designed the thing in the first place. So it makes sense to make, to ensure that, you know, our architects and our designers are, are locked into uh, his, his brain and his insight into how to move transactions through the network at high scale or unbounded. So we, we did some reconfiguration. Uh, we moved our development teams around a little bit, uh, changed some personnel from one team to another uh, and reconfigured the project a little. And uh, we've made massive steps in the last four months. In fact, the development is now complete. And I saw with my own eyes, uh, probably three weeks ago now, uh, I was looking at um, screens and we were processing uh, on a, in a test environment, and this was a full end-to-end -end test across the full uh, Terranode stack. And it was, you know, I'm gonna be very precise here, 1.572 million transactions per second. So, so that's, you know, that's a little more than one and a half million transactions a second. Now, our goal or our standard that we were striving to, to provide a test was a million. So we've exceeded that by 50%. And we talk about the network scaling unbounded. What we saw in those test results uh, were no bottlenecks. So theoretically, uh, we've got a situation where just by pure scale, and that is hardware infrastructure scale, uh, we, we believe we can scale unbounded, way beyond those numbers. But the test criteria that Dr. Wright set out for us was that when we were ready, he wanted to start a test on a network with three Terra nodes. So it was simulating a, a, a real world distributed network, secure distributed network environment, firing through um, in excess of a million transactions per second, sustained for six months. Now you imagine the amount of storage so if you're, if you're rocking through with a million, million and a half, two million transactions per second, every second for six months, that's a massive amount of storage. So we're working on ways to uh, contain the, the, the storage problem. Uh, and that is where well, you can store, but at what cost? And what would you do in the real world? In the real world, miners uh, or, or operators like Tal would prune transactions at certain stages and move those transactions off to secondary storage so that you've got your primary storage is is always at a you know economically commercial commercially viable level so that's the sort of stuff we're working out at the moment uh, that i call it polishing and uh, we expect to kick off a sustained network test now i spoke to craig and said do you really want us to uh have all these transactions uh like this set up for six months and he said look not really two three four months is okay um i don't mind if it runs for six months and some transactions are in secondary storage but the whole process needs to be third party audited so that the order process gives certification to the entire terranode um, capability and that that can be proven and we can drill down and go back to those transactions to prove that they exist so 
Terranode's in pretty good shape. Uh, and that's the future of, uh, of the network. So the challenge that we have now as, a, as an industry sector is to generate transactions uh, and but work with third parties to generate transactions. And, and if we're talking about million, two million transactions per second, I mean, that's more than the world needs at the moment, but the only, the way that that's going to be driven is through government, government solutions. It's, it's that type of transactional environment that will drive those volumes. And speaking of government solutions, we are in the Philippines right now. And as we know, Enchain is working with the local government of Bataan. How's that going? And um, are there any plans to partner up maybe with other local governments or government agencies? to perhaps maybe get these transactions going. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, and yes. Um, I was that close to having dinner with uh, Governor Garcia here in uh, Makati on Sunday night, but he's gone to uh, uh, a special meeting of governors that's been convened on one of the islands here. So we missed each other um, just in crossover, but Butter is progressing well. We signed our lease on the facility, the office, N-Chain has taken a lease in the government building the bunker in uh, Balanga. So we're going to be a res resident of Balanga. Uh, we're also using uh, the office and uh, facilities here in Makati. So that'll be branded, partially branded as, as N-Chain as well. So we'll have the two. The Block Dojo team will be working between the two and we'll be sharing the, the two facilities with the Block Dojo um, uh, group. So when their cohort activities are in uh, Butter Arm, they'll be using the office over there. And when they're running activities here, they'll be using the office in, in Makati. We've hired a couple of people. Uh, we've got fingers crossed. We need, you know, some more feet on the ground here. Uh, business is business opportunities are incredibly active uh, at all levels. Research programs, joint research programs, um, joint research activities on topics around blockchain and AI, healthcare. I've had three meetings in the last two days around healthcare solutions using blockchain, digital identity, data transparency in healthcare systems, and all, all roads seem to lead to Phil Health. So everyone's saying to me they've got these solutions that they're working on in, in collaboration with Phil Health. So I guess at some stage I might see a Phil Health logo in my life. I at least ho <laughs> hope so because it's um, it's a really important area. And I talk about digital transformation and I talk about uh, social impact. There's no greater social impact than uh, the healthcare system here, you know. And healthcare system and delivery of government services. They they just want to integrate technology into you know every industry. Um, so as we wrap up 2023 and yeah. moving forward to 2024, um, what are your thoughts of, of the year that passed um, in terms of Enchain, um, uh, the growth of um, the company here in the Philippines and your experience as well? And what can we look forward to in 2024? Well, I'll start with 2024. 20, 20, I thought 2023 was going to be a very special year. And it turned out to be a special year in a lot of strange ways, but... 2024, I think, is a, a year of real blockchain use case revenue generation through partnerships. And for me, I mean, I'm back in the CEO seat now. Um, it's it's partnerships that I'm focused on. Yes, we 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 have um, a commercial team, and the commercial team is focused on developing opportunities direct but uh, what we're finding is uh, most of the discussions that we're having is through um, through partners and one of the one of the one of the focuses and priorities that I've set is that we've got a number of organizations over the over over the last two or three years who have licensed our intellectual property and built solutions and one of them that is here present with us at this event today and tomorrow is Unisoft from Scandinavia. And I want Enchain to work with our partners to develop their revenue streams because they're using our intellectual property. You know, it's our obligation to work with our partners to help them build their businesses. It's, there's no point for us to sign a license agreement with X 
and say, off you go, boys. And we need to back and support them in any way we can to help their business grow. Their business grows, the revenue that we derive through our licensing agreements grows for us. So we're working on a number of fronts. Government is, is very big. Government is big here. Govern, government is big in a number of other, other places around the world. Our partner programs are going to be very important. I want user group activities, you know, our licensees. I want in user groups and I want us to be uh, running uh, sessions with them a couple of times a year, probably one of them around the London conference uh, every May. And I'm refocusing our research activities because the value that we have in our organization comes from the decisions we made in 2015, 16, 17 around what research topics to focus on. And we had an enormous um, funnel of uh, titles to draw from, but you know, there was Craig, myself, Alan, and uh, uh, I think uh, Steph Savannah. We, we used to sit in a room, just the four of us, and make decisions about what our priorities were back then in those days. And I've said, I don't know whether we were smart or whether we were just damn lucky, but we tried to project um, what the world wanted from blockchain in five to 10 years. And that's why we're sitting on all this material that is around uh, data security, digitization of identity, and everything that forms the basis of Web3. So we didn't know what Web3 was then. So we were probably lucky. But now I'm challenging the research team not to think about what they want to create today as a product, but what we should be having, aiming to have as a product suite in five years' time. And I can guarantee that AI is going to play a big part in that. A lot of AI stuff. We've already got AI titles that, um, AI blockchain related titles that are being patent filed at the moment or have been. A lot more of that is to come. I'm wanting to work with uh, more universities on joint um, research programs, and I guarantee that at least half those programs will be AI blockchain related. Great. Yeah. Right. Um, yes, uh, from the AI summits that I've been to, everybody who's more focused on AI there, but very welcoming when it comes to the integration of AI and blockchain because they said it's, you know, it's a perfect blend because you've got data and you've got intelligence. So. Yeah, looking forward to that. So it's an exciting year. Sounds like an exciting year coming up ahead. Um, lots of work for Enchain. Anything else you'd like to add? No, uh, I think you've pretty much covered it. Um, every year is an exciting year. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, Clint. I don't, I don't know. Uh, the, years, the years seem to go faster and they get, seem to get more exciting. I don't, I don't know what it is. No, it's just, you're just an exciting person and you, you attract excitement. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, pleasure to be here. Bitcoin Wallet, Blockchain, Stablecoins, Metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Blockchain 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain.